Hey everyone, Pike here, Sam. Welcome to part four, the final part of our Hasegawa 132 Fokker Wolf D9 video build. So the final touches today, we're going to get some decaling down, we're going to give it a panel line wash, we're going to give it a satin coat, we're going to give it a filter, we're going to have some streaking effects, we're going to get the landing gear built, the exhaust done, get some weather on the exhaust, get this whole thing done and dusted. And I'll tell you now, I've thoroughly enjoyed this kit, it's been great fun, and I was very, very eager to get this finished. So we'll crack on straight with the build and get going where we left off last time. Picking up where we left off last time, we've got our freshly dried, glossed body. And we've got our Eagle cars, I think they are, aftermarket decals, which proved to be absolutely horrendous and just cracked and fell apart on me. So, not good. So they were swiftly thrown to the bin. And we went with the kit decals instead. Um, so, I still need to use some of the markings off the aftermarket sheet but for the larger markings like these balcon cruises we're going to use the hasagawa decals and to be fair to them they proved to be not too bad now the main issue with these decals was any decals that had large areas of white like this that tended to be where they broke um but with some ump decal solutions the hasagawa ones went down fine and i was lucky enough to get the rest of the eagle car ones down as well the controversial swastika on the tail Yes, I know a lot of people don't like these, but it's a historical part of the aircraft. It's just, there's no getting away from it. Um, if anyone doesn't want to put it on, you don't have to put it on. You can hide it or move it, you know, remove it, what have you. Uh, Facebook doesn't like them at all, so I have to blur them out on the Facebook pics. But for me, I'm not a natty lover. I'm not a Third Reich follower. I'm just a modeler. And for me, these are historical markings, so they should be on there. I know this stamp is some of the worst atrocity humankind's ever done, but it is a historical marking. So we're going to get these down. As we go, we're going to heat the decals up as well and get them set in place with um, the normal strong and extra strong UMP solutions. Uh, like I say, the rest of the decals are quite eventful. We used all the larger uh, decals from the Hasegawa kit on it. Incidentally, my Hasegawa kit came with no swastikas at all. So luckily my decal set did and I have a whole sheet of them from my days of modeling back in old folklore where I did a lot of aircraft. I still have all my old aircraft decals. I've got a big folder full of them, mainly spares. Like I say, on the wings. I think these are kit box ones. Uh, sorry, the IndyCal one. IndyCals. The Eagle Cal decals on here that I use. And these were actually went down okay. Lots of clear carrier film on these. It needs to be very thorough and get rid of any moisture from underneath. And as I said before, use your references on your decal sheet and use any real life references on the aircraft panel lines, access panels to get it in position properly. Make sure everything's straight and orientated the correct way around. So nice and simple to do. Clean up any excess decal solutions. There we go. And again, this is an aircraft, so if you do tear a decal, it's not the end of the world. Decals are marking, well not decals, but markings did get damaged on aircraft, so it's not the end of the world if something tears. For me, I like them to go down perfect if I can, unless I am intentionally uh, weathering them. So quite a lot of decals on the sheet, there's two sheets with this as well. Four different aircraft you can model, we're going for yellow one. Uh, it's a case of going around all the aircraft and putting all the decals on. And then where needed, if there's a panel line, we need to cut through them with our scalpel. Nice and carefully on all axes, on vertical and horizontal. And then hit it with some decal solution to get it set in place. And I find stippling with a brush, the best way of doing it, brush it in, get the uh, decal solution in there. And then tap, 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 tap to push it in the panel line. Probably some of the trickiest decals with these little stripe um, markings on the wings. I think these are your walk areas where you can walk on the aircraft, if I remember correctly. These need to be perfectly lined up. They're a little bit tricky to do, but with some time and patience and care, they weren't too bad, really. There we go. 
looking good. So yeah, other than the mishap of the first few decals, the rest of the decals went down all right. Not too bad, apart from that one that snapped. But luckily, loads of excess decal, so we can get it all lined up. And once you're happy, you get a set in place with your decal solution. This is UMP Strong. Let it do its work, and then come back and burnish it down later, and give it a little bit of heat to make sure everything is seated properly. So they're the kit decals, so we're pretty much finished with those. But we've got loads of little stencils to put on. So I tend to work on a wing first, and a tail, then the side, and then underneath. I kind of systematically work my way around each section until I'm happy everywhere is done. We've got these really annoying little markers on the back. Now, my decals with the aftermarket came with just the actual center decals. I should have sprayed these red, but I missed doing it. So I opted to use the Hasegawa decals instead. With all the decaling done, it's now time for a wash. So we're gonna mix some brown with black to make a very dark brown color, exactly like we did on the interior. I made a horrendous mess on my bench, which has ruined my filming sheet. Uh, we're going to go around and capillary wash all the panel lines. Now, I did intend to leave the wash on these raised areas, which did all wipe off, but we'll add it back in later. We're just going to concentrate on the pin wash for now. So quite a lot to wash on this. You just need to work your way around. No riveting detail like I explained in part one, uh, which would have been nice on this because they do have riveting detail on them on the real aircraft. Hasegawa opted to leave them off for some reason. But we'll go around instead and just do all the panel lines. And this is one of the stages. After decaling, the wash will bring this alive. It just makes it all pop and see all the panel lines, especially on the lighter green and the blue on the side and the underneath, it just really brings it all alive. So exactly the same way we do a car, we get the, uh, the wash in place, let it dry for 20, 30 minutes, and then we're gonna wipe this off today with a mixture of cotton buds and tissue paper using our Sansador Odeless Mineral Spirits. And we know the um, Mr. Hobby Clear will be fine with that. So there's our Sansador Odeless Mineral Spirits from Windsor Newton. We don't need a lot of that on there at all. I'm just going to go around and gently rub. Now, don't forget the decals aren't sealed in here. They are still fresh on the surface. So you need to press hard enough to get the wash off without overly rubbing the decals because those little decals will lift. If you're not careful, they will lift. So it's going to go around and gently rub it until all the wash is removed. And then we can seal all this in with our semi-gloss satin coat before we go to any next weathering stages. Now, the reason we're going to seal it in is to A, lose the high gloss. We want a semi-gloss sheen, and B, it'll seal in the enamel wash so that anything else we put over the top doesn't reactivate it. So we'll seal everything in. The decals will be sealed in. The wash will be sealed in the lot. And as you can see, that wash highlights all those uh, panel lines and access points, and it does make a big difference. It's one of the most important steps you can do to a model and surprising how many people leave it out. And seriously, even if you don't do any weathering, put a wash on it. You know my philosophy, if it'll hold a wash, give it a wash. It adds depth to everything, whether it's a motorcycle, frame, chain, carburetor, whatever, wheels, panel lines in the car. If it will hold a wash, give it a wash. It adds depth to the model. It just makes them a little bit more interesting and breaks up the monotone look. You'll see what I mean at the end. It just brings the model alive. You can already see it on the wings. It just adds an extra depth and dimension of the paintwork. It's just so well worth doing. And it's a very easy step. This probably took me 45 minutes to do. And 25 minutes of that, we're waiting for the wash to dry. It just really brings the model alive. Um, it does make a huge difference. You know, especially underneath. Look, look how alive the underneath has come now. It really makes a big difference. So there's not numerous washes you can use. If you put a really good gloss coat on like this, you can use UMP washes. I prefer oils and enamels now. Uh, oils, enamels, and lacquers. Look at that. Look at all the panel lines. Absolutely beautiful. Just makes that surface area pop. Absolutely amazing. Underneath just looks phenomenal. Look at that now. What a difference it makes. And again, don't be worried about getting every speck of wash off. Don't worry about it. It'll add to the weathering effect. And you can go back and add more if you want as well. 
So, like I say, we've got some Mr. Hobby UV satin clear now. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of coats of this on, and that'll take back the high shine of our gloss we use for our decal on the wash. And it'll seal in the decals and seal in the enamel wash that we put in the other weather and effects over the top. It won't reactivate it all on us. And you can see it just dulls the surface and again adds a lot more interest to the model. We don't I used to always mac up my aircraft. And I think it was a mistake looking back now because it just makes them look a little bit monotone. I think the satin coat is the perfect coat for it because it just adds a little bit of matte to it, leaves a little bit of reflection and just you know takes away that rough look that a Mac coat can leave behind. Yep. And obviously we've got some landing gear parts to do as well. We've painted up the propellers too. Um, the colour for that was RLM. I can't remember what colour it was now, but I didn't have it. And I actually found it as a code we could mix a pro scale. So this colour I'm spraying now is actually a pro scale paint colour for the landing gear pays, uh, funnily enough, and for the propeller, the dark green black. Um, they are pro scale paint. You see it in the background, actually, you can see the bottle of it. And this colour on the nose cone, a pro scale paint as well. Now, obviously, I don't know how many military paints we can do. It's something we maybe look at at a later date, but they were perfect on this. This blue, uh, sorry, black green on the propeller and the nose cone looked absolutely fantastic. And they sprayed absolutely great as well, just like they do on the car bodies. Nice thin coat building it up. And on our wheels, we've got some rubber black, which is LP65 from Tamiya. We're going to spray our wheels and we'll mask these up later on and spray our centers. Now I've masked up our landing gear. And the way I've done this is I've put a big sheet of 40 mil tape over the top and burnished the edge down to get the demarcation of the edge of the whale bait and then got a sharp scalpel blade and just very lightly followed the panel line, so the cut out and cut out the inside. It's a simple, quick way of doing it. So we've got the inside of the landing gear here. This is Pro Scale Paint Paint again. We're going to do inside the flaps at the back as well. We've masked off everywhere we need to and that rear landing gear bay as well. So don't get any overspray anywhere you don't want it. If you're unsure, put more masking down. But there we go. Perfectly painted. Absolutely brilliant. There we go. Pop that there to dry for a bit. We've masked up our wheels as well. So the center is the RLM color we mixed with Pro Scale, and the outer is the rubber black. From Tamiya, we can now assemble our landing gear. So follow your instructions. Make sure you get everything orientated the correct way around. Now, there is a suspension leg on this, and it is like a high shine. So I'm going to use some burn metal foil. I'm just going to cut the correct size strip. And then wrap it around to pop it in place. A little bit tricky to do. There's only two to do. It doesn't take long. And they look really good as well. They do generally look good. We can weather these later. So I tend to get it on. Rather than overlapping it several times, we'll just snip it and then burst it down with a cotton bud and then roll the other edge over the top and fold it back on itself. You could also mask this and paint it if you wanted. You could hand paint it, whatever way is going to work for you. But I've always tend to go the bare metal foil route. Squint and it comes into focus a little bit more. Trust me. It's a magical effect. So there you go. You can see it after and there we go burnish that down we get a nice high shine finish i've got tons of bare metal foil and i hate using not windows so it needs to be used for something then we've got our little i believe they are oleos oleos little suspension part of it which needs to be glued in a specific way so make sure you refer to your instructions again a few dabs of bob smith's gold we can glue that in place. There we go. These are handed, these um, landing gear legs. Several decals to go on each leg as well. So same decal procedure as before. Uh, decals only came with my aftermarket set, not the Hasegawa set. And there we go. There's our transparent white oil. So I popped on a bit of card to let it draw out some of the um, carrier film. Carrier oil, sorry. 
And I'm using a cocktail stick. We're going to apply like small dabs. You don't need a lot of this stuff at all. This stuff you can get from like a hobby craft or Michael's or an art store. And it literally is a transparent white. And what this will do, we're going to add dabs of it all over. And this will add a filter to the paint. So what we'll do now is once we've got an area done, we're going to get a flat brush. I'm just going to brush it all back on the model. Just get it spread out a little bit. Now get some Winsor Newton Sansador, which is in this little cup. And wipe off the excess. And then we're going to grab it and just drag it all over the wings. We're going to do this everywhere on the aircraft, all over the fuselage. And the aim of the game here is to leave behind a very, very thin, transparent white filter. So you can see how thick it is in here. As you can see how it's going in the panel lines as well, which is why we put the satin gloss down, uh, the satin coat down, because it will reactivate the enamel wash in there otherwise. Now I'm just going to go through and just brush it all back. And then we'll dry off the brush, add a little bit more Santador, and just keep brushing and brushing and brushing until... 90% of it is gone. And then once that dries, it'll leave a nice, hazy, weathered filter effect on the paintwork. And it just makes it look more weathered and blends everything in together and makes it look a lot less new. Now, it does take a while to dry. And I find you need a couple of applications of it. So I tend to dab it in the sansador, uh, dry off the brush, and I'm just going to drag it all over. Use your brush to get any excess out of the panel lines. It'll draw it out. And just keep going until you're happy. It will dry. And if you need to go over it again, you can go over it again. No problem at all. So I've got a nice soft bristle brush here. It's a flat brush as well. Just a cheap brush. Add a little bit more. I'm just going to draw out the wash from the panel lines. Same on the other side as well. Like I say, once this dries... It's one of those effects that kind of combines everything together. It just gives us a nice faded look to the model. And again, you can go over it again if you want. You can take more off if you want. You name it, you can do it. There we go. We've also added a dark brown panel line wash to the landing gear legs as well. So we've got the gear bay door on there too. I'm just going to wipe off all the wash. We've also put a wash in the gear bays and the flap housings as well. There we go. Repeat that to the other side too. And on our fuel tank as well. And again, the wash just brings these alive. It just adds depth to all the panel lines and everywhere. It just takes away that monotone look. It just makes them look a lot more interesting. And obviously, it's up to you how much you remove or how much you add. Um, the weathering is in your court here almost. You can do as little or as much as you want. There is no right or wrong way here. Real life references are always handy to look at. So you can see you have a plan of where to go. And the engine at the front. Now, because of the way this is assembled, I thought I'm going to brush paint it black. You can barely see it past the propeller. It's not really an engine anyway. It's a fake front. So we're going to brush paint it in model color black. We'll dry brush it later on uh, with some silver and then give it a panel line wash later on. But for now, I'm just going to brush paint this. Like I said, I want to keep this build nice and simple and it gets no more simpler than this. Now, we've got our exhaust. These are resin aftermarket exhausts from Air Res. Um, they've been primed in black. I've got my Life Color Rust set, which, in my opinion, is by far one of the best rust sets you can get. So I'm going to start with a dark brown color, and we're going to paint the entirety of the exhausts themselves in this dark brown color. Highly recommend this set. It is absolutely fantastic for doing things like this. So paint up the entire exhaust in the dark brown. Don't worry if the black shows through. It'll add to the effect. You don't need to get full coverage. Water-based paints, they brush on absolutely beautiful. And as you'll see in a minute, they dry brush even better. 
So I've coated that on all the exhaust first, let that dry. And we come back with a slightly darker tone. And I'm just going to dry brush it. We've got quite a bit of paint on here. We haven't taken a lot of it off. But we're just going to dry brush everywhere to add a darker tone to the lighter tone we've already got on there. And that will just start to give us a nice tonal variation on it, as you can see. And then when that's dried, which these paints dry super fast, we've got the lighter tone out of the set. Good job that bottle was closed. And we've wiped off the majority of paint on this now. And this is a true dry brush now. We're just going to go over the edges now with this. And this will just make it look like a rusted out bit of metal. Looks absolutely fantastic. And now there's a very, very, what would I call it? This is like a typical rust color now. So we've dry brushed that as well, just over everywhere we've done. We don't want to go too over the top of this bit. We just want to go over the edges and maybe over the sides just a touch. Like I say, by far the best rust set, in my opinion, this. On ease of use and results, because the exhaust will look fantastic when they're done. It's a quick 10 minute job, this. Didn't take long to do at all. The water base, they dry super fast. And once it's all dry, we're going to black panel line wash. Just wash it all, let it dry, wipe it off. And there we go, in my opinion, easily weathered exhausts. There's a whole host of other ways you go. You can put pigment on there, whatever you want to do, whichever way you want to go. For me, this is a nice, simple way of doing it. And it looks very, very effective as well. So leave that to dry for 20 minutes. We've got a cotton bud and we'll just wipe off all the excess. And it should blend all those colors together and give us nicely painted weathered exhausts. Propeller, we're just going to add some wash to it and then wipe it off. Um, wooden propeller or metal, depending on the pilot's choice on these aircraft. Uh, I opted for wooden on mine, so I wasn't going to chip it or anything. Uh, but what I did do was lightly run a pencil around the edge of it to take away the stark black colour of the paint. Just add a bit of tonal difference to it. And then we're going to get the black panel line wash and just apply some streaks in the centre. Let that dry and wipe it off. And hopefully it'll just take away the starkness of the black green and just add a little bit of depth to it. So you could do a lot of effects to a wooden propeller or if it's metal, you can chip it like hell. But for me, just very light. Didn't want to do a lot at all. Same on the nose comb. Really did want to go to town on this. So just some nice, simple weathering. And then on the exhaust, these have dried now. We can get a cotton bud in and wipe off any excess wash. Get all the fluff off from the cotton bud because they do snag on these. Now, there are seams on these exhausts. If you're using the kit ones, don't sand them off. Joe, I didn't tell in time and he did. Sorry, Joe. Uh, but I use the resin ones, which are a vast improvement over the kit ones. Now, we've cut them off the carrier plugs, uh, test fitted everything, a couple of drops of glue. They are sized um, for the specific areas. So you can't go wrong where you put them. And they fit it in place absolutely perfect. And like I say, in my opinion, a vast improvement over the kit parts. So glad I bought these. And then we can get our spinner on our prop as well. Next aircraft we build, the P-47, I will weather it a little bit more. I have decided going forward, I'm not going to go mad. I'm just going to model for me. Because back in the day, I quite often didn't model for me. I modeled under peer pressure or for other people or to try and get effects I've seen. Whereas with this one, I did it my own way. It's got very minimal weathering on it. And I was more than, more than happy with the build. Landing gear legs fit in very positively. They just slot in. I didn't glue them in place. Uh, and I'm glad I didn't because about a week later I dropped a box on top of the plane and luckily the landing gear leg popped out and didn't snap. Um, I repaired it easy. There are these little structural pieces in here that just go in with a couple of dabs of glue and a couple of locator points. 
fairly simple to get in place. Just get your tweezers and line everything up together. There we go, get everything lined up. And then on the tail gear, this tells you to put this in first time before you close it all. You don't need to. We've brush painted it all because it was the easiest way of doing it. So we just pop it in place, get it glued in, get it lined up, make sure it's sitting straight and exactly where it needs to be. Which is about there. And then we've dry brushed the center of this with some uh, Vallejo Model Color Silver, and now we've popped in a Tamiya Black Panel Line Wash. And I'm just gonna wipe the excess off, and I will leave all the wash in there because we don't need to worry too much about that. And then our actual prop stud is in there, a little dab of glue over the top, and glue it in. Never glue your propeller with the center sticking up, it looks odd in my opinion. Always do it offset a little bit. Now, underneath, I forgot to drill a hole for this fuel tank. So I knew roughly where it went. So I put a couple of dabs of glue, uh, not glue, of wash where it needed to be on the pins, lined it up and just touched it where it needed to go. And it left behind a perfect imprint of where we needed to drill. So I then got my little battery power drill and just drilled the holes. Obviously the marks for drilling are on the inside, but me being an umpty, I completely forgot. And these lined up absolutely perfect i did have to shave a little bit of that little nubbing off this just in front because it was restricting where the drop tank went but pretty happy i got this pretty much spot on paul j lewis helped me with references of his and i also forgot to drill the hole for the retractable ladder as well so again fairly obvious where they go but this one yeah nice simple fix for that and then a couple of dabs of glue And get all that glued in place. There we go. And then we've got a UHF antenna, I believe it is, on the back. This has all been painted off camera because we forgot to paint it the first time round. So that will go in, we glue it in place, detail paint the silver, and then give it a wash later on. And then there's a little drop down antenna as well. I think it's an antenna. But again, we'll just glue in place. There's several pito tubes on this as well. They've all been painted off camera. Now these are the point where you put things on that can be knocked off. So you need to start working a little bit more carefully. This is a rather big center tubey thing that hangs out. So glue it in, get it on the right angle. And then the pitot tube on the end of the wing literally slotted in place perfectly. So I didn't even need to glue it. It was in absolutely perfect. And then the gun barrels can go in. So they've been painted black and we'll dry brush them silver. So let's get them all lined up so they're all nice and straight and at the right length. Happy with those, they're looking good. The old CA glue tips proving invaluable on the aircraft model. They're getting in, and like I say, dry brush with a bit of silver over the top. Don't go mad with them. And uh, then cut them off and slot them through. Now on this, there's a little stop at the top, and if you put a bit of glue on it and wiggle it round, you can feel where it goes to. So let's put the tiniest bit of glue on the back. And then carefully slot it through the holes in the cowling. And then pushed it flat on the fuse large, pushed it back. You can literally feel where it stops. There we go. The retractable step on the side. We're just going to drill with our battery power drill. And then glue it in place with a couple of dabs of glue. Yabba dabba do. Yeah, make sure you get this thing orientated the correct way. 
And then a little bit of silver paint on a micro brush for the antenna at the back. Just a bit of model air silver. And the pitot tubes as well, the very tips of them is silver as well. So we'll utilize the same brush. The model air silvers are still some of the best silver paints you can get. And like I said, we can have a bit of a wash in here too. Just to take away that star contrast of the paint. Let that dry and wipe off the excess. There we go. Again, don't be too focused on getting it all out because it would be quite a dirty, dirty air on the aircraft. And then some exhaust stains. Now, a bit of a sticky point this. I opted for what I saw in pictures and I just did it with Tamiya Flat Black. I went over the exhaust a little bit and then just did a bit of a streak back with a bit of a thinner point at the end. And yeah, more than happy with that. Looked all right to me. I was happy with how it looked. Also had a little bit of streaking for some of the access points and drain holes on the wings and what have you. Just did a little bit of a back spray. But again, this is up to you how much or little you do. There's numerous ways of doing this. You can use oils, you can use pigments, uh, you can dry brush, you can airbrush, whatever. I was just going for a nice simple way of doing it. And then the canopy. So if you remember right, we cut, we glued this on just lightly with some glue and glaze. We just need to slice it off with our Stanley, uh, scalpel. Get a moistened cotton bud, which I 100% did not lick, to wipe off any excess glue. And then we can unmask the canopies, which turned out absolutely fantastic. Almost perfect, a pair of them. Yeah, very crisp panel lines. Very happy with that. Any excess, you can always wipe off a little bit of um, cotton bud. But I think it was actually on the inside. This with a little bit of overspray got in. And there we go. A little quick wipe and off it came. And then inside, a little dab of Bob, Bob Smith's gold. We've painted up our interior piece. Now be wary which version of the kit you're doing because there's two different ones. This is the correct one for ours. Sprayed in the interior colours before. And then unmask the front canopy as well. And again, absolutely perfectly masked. No problems whatsoever. If you're going to do multiple aircraft in the same aircraft, you can often reuse these masks. They do tend to come off pretty much in one piece. So if you're ever going to do another one, just put it back on the sheet and you can always reuse it. But yeah, looking really good. This front one was uh, time extra thinned on, so no problems with that coming off. And then there's a lot of the cape points where the canopy sits. So we just put some Bob Smiths on there and slide it back in the open position where we want it. And now another point to con, what's the word? And we're going to use controversy. No, no, it's not controversy. Forget the word is the antennas. So the three points one comes out the top of the fuselage one goes on the top of the horizontal uh, the vertical stabilizer and it goes into the back of the canopy different versions of the aircraft have different uh systems on this particular one when the canopy's back the antenna should droop i hate that look i didn't want to do that so i did it taut with it back whereas the later uh, the other version has a system in it that keeps it taut so it's up to you what you do uh, controversy is that the word might be controversy uh, but we put it in left it taut and we used a little bit of super glue to add the resistors at either end and painted those black so it's up to you how you do it at the end of the day it's your model but that is my model uh, near enough complete very very lightly weathered like seriously lightly weathered compared to some aircraft you'll see out there but I just wanted to get it done and we have this is the first aircraft I have built in five years and finished and actually enjoyed building um so this is quite a milestone for me to do um one final touch we've got some ump sandy earth pigment 
and we're just going to put some pigment on the landing gear wheels just to take away the starkness of it so brush it on don't worry how much you put on because it will all brush off it's not a problem at all if you put a little bit too much on you can get it back off we're putting no binders on to hold it i've added a very light bit of chipping on the walkway edge on the edge of the canopy with the pilot would get in as well i literally stippled it with a brush and some vallejo model air i didn't get it on camera unfortunately but i just stippled it very very lightly uh, and rubbed off any excess with some vallejo airbrush cleaner if i needed to um and the final touch is the uh navigation lights on the wings these just slot in they're clear plastic one side is clear red one side clear blue i think it is so we get some tamiya x range of clears and a micro brush and just literally touch it and it does the light for us perfectly and then spin it around and do the blue on the other side and there there we are we're done like i say i've gone very light on weathering like really really light it's another point that these aircraft were heavily weathered and then that they didn't live long enough to get heavily weathered but this is my interpretation of the aircraft and i am more than happy with how it turned out it looks absolutely beautiful in my eyes a little bit of weathering on it not too much no issues with this kit whatsoever um a really easy kit to build certainly pick the perfect um kit for this because it was nice simple out of the box scheme minimal parts me and joe built it step by step together as a buddy build and like i say this is the first airplane kit in five years that i have built and bear in mind i was an aircraft and armor builder i wasn't a car builder at all so it shows you how far and gone it took me to get back into aircraft but i'm more than happy with this and glad it's done and on to the next aircraft and there we are all done what can i say that was great fun uh i knew i'd picked the right kit as soon as i reviewed the kit i thought it's a really simple kit um it'll be a joy to build it was a fantastic fitting kit no real issues anywhere at all uh i think joe enjoyed it as well we'll see if he does any more i don't know no pressure on joe if he wants to i'm always there to build with him uh, but for me it's definitely whetted my appetite i bought a 30 second scale p47 uh, from Trumpeter and the 32nd scale Tamiya P51. So they'll be built, the P47, hopefully pretty soon. So nice to get a bit of interest back in the aircraft because I love aircraft. I love looking at models, real things, the lot. I just had a very weird mental block in my head where I just couldn't get my head around finishing them. And getting this one done and off the bench and being really happy with it is definitely a mojo boost with these. So you will hopefully see more, well, I'm planning to, more aircraft along the way so there we go very happy with that wonderful kit no problems at all great paint decals a little bit naff not the best the interior set the wrong color other than that really good detail set the resin exhausts were a very good addition to the kit and the window masks are a must on any aircraft kit in my opinion so yeah a little bit of aftermarket a little bit of light weathering i didn't want anything heavily weathered on this and i've certainly gone that route i think but more than happy with the outcome on this, and it's definitely whetted my appetite for aircraft. So we will also see some more of them. Hope you enjoyed that journey through my first proper aircraft kit in five years, as much as I did. Um, next up is the Ford Mustang Mach 1. Then we've got the Alfa Romeo, Alfa Models Alfa Romeo Julia, which is already painted and underway, followed by a Foos Cadillac Eldorado, in our pro scale paints flip paint our very first flip color so loads going on i've still got loads of video footage to get through uh so loads of videos jar for you guys and obviously only you get to watch these the full build videos so please leave a comment at the end let me know what you think and uh there we go thanks for watching uh everyone enjoy the rest of the evening take care bye bye